Listen here, architectural outcast, if that's your real name, and I have doubts. This is undisputable proof that you have finally flipped your lid. There is no way that It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown is the greatest Halloween movie ever made. Oh yeah? My video, my rules. Ha! Now, before you all start getting out your pitchforks and torches, let's do what my grandmother used to always tell me. Listen to a man's argument before you condemn it. Let me make my case as to why I think It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown is the greatest Halloween movie ever made, and then you all can decide where it falls on your list. I can attack so I cast. Growing up on a farm at the end of a dirt road with the nearest neighbor over a mile away, we didn't do any trick-or-treating when I grew up. In fact, the very first time I ever went trick-or-treating was on a first date when I was in my early 20s. We were chaperoning a bunch of little kids. I was carrying this adorable little girl who had no clue what was going on, but was fascinated with the idea that if she held out this little basket... People put candy in it. Everybody thought the young lady and I were married and the little girl was ours. Awkward. Instead of trick-or-treating, my family would walk through the freshly harvested fields under the moonlight. We would tell scary, spooky stories and then dare each other to walk home without the benefit of a flashlight. You would get bonus points if you could somehow slip away without anybody noticing, get ahead, and then jump out of the bushes. And of course, we can't forget, my family would watch every year on network TV, It's a Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. We just didn't watch The Great Pumpkin. We watched all the Peanuts specials. As you all can see, I'm into the Peanuts. Why am I telling you all these details? I'm acknowledging I have a bias. Setting nostalgia aside, why do I continue to place such importance on the great pumpkin Charlie Brown all these years later? Meaning and message. One common critique that y'all will often hear, it's a great pumpkin Charlie Brown is about the dangers of foolish faith. That is a legitimate interpretation. But let's think a little deeper, shall we? What are the two options that Linus is being asked to choose between? On one hand, he can choose to go with Lucy, Charlie Brown, and the rest of the gang trick-or-treating and get lots of candy. On the other hand, Linus can choose to stay in the pumpkin patch all night with the hope of meeting the great pumpkin and the chance of getting presents. We know what happens. Linus misses out on going trick-or-treating, misses out on getting candy, and the Great Pumpkin doesn't show up, and he doesn't get any presents. Linus acted foolishly, right? What's the origin of trick-or-treating? Northern Europe, British Isles, All Hallows' Eve, the time of year when the barrier between our world, the world of the living, and the spirit world is the thinnest, and he risked the possibility of evil spirits crossing over into our world, causing all sorts of mischief. Children and teenagers would dress as evil spirits, and they would run around making lots of noise, scaring off the real evil spirits. As a reward for their good deeds, they would be given treats, good things to eat. Over time, this turned into a game, a kind of good-natured extortion racket. Give us the treats or we will cause the mischief. By the 1960s, when this movie came out, no one was still going trick-or-treating because they believed they were chasing off evil spirits. Linus's real choice was going through the motions, acting out the rituals of a faith he didn't believe in, or, on the other hand, acting out the rituals of something he did believe in. The candy. Randy, the candy. Linus missed out on all that yummy, wonderful candy. Linus gave up instant gratification for potential long-term benefits. I don't know about y'all, but I believe that Linus's choice sends a very powerful message. And then there's Sally, Charlie Brown's little sister. Yeah, Randy, we can't forget about poor little old Sally, 
Linus tricked her into hanging out with him in the pumpkin patch. Because of his deception, she missed out on trick-or-treating, missed out on all that candy. Again, no. Sally couldn't give a Snickers bar about the great pumpkin. She chose to hang out in the pumpkin patch because she wanted to spend time with Linus. Sally has a crush on Linus. What's more, Linus knows this. Under normal circumstances, Linus avoids Sally at all costs. But tonight, he not only wants to hang out with her, he's actively encouraging it. Once Sally joins Linus in the pumpkin patch, all he can do is talk about the legend of the great pumpkin. Out of nowhere, Sally announces, you try to hold my hand, I'll sock you. Sally wants Linus to hold her hand. She's trying to tell him, hey buddy, there's an opportunity here. Poor Linus is oblivious. All he has on his mind is the great pumpkin. When Sally realizes the great pumpkin was a no-show and she missed out on trick-or-treating and the party, she's not happy. But when she shouts, I want restitution, she doesn't want Linus to give her candy. She's using the situation as leverage to gain what she really wants, to hang out with Linus again. How often is the case that we do something that we believe is for the right reasons with one intended goal, and along the way, we end up getting something completely different that we didn't even know was possible. Sure, Linus didn't get to see the great pumpkin, but along the way, his friendship with Sally became stronger, whether he wanted it or not. You want to read one of the most foul, mean-spirited things you'll ever come across? Check out the postmodern critique of the Peanuts. The postmodernists claim that Snoopy represents the bourgeoisie, more specifically, the American suburban middle class. These postmodernists further claim that Americans live such vapid, empty, boring lives that the only way they can find purpose and meaning in these lives is by retreating into a fantasy world. There's a major problem with this argument, though. Charles Schultz's canon. Yes, Snoopy does have a vivid imagination, but a lot of what he does, he does in the real world. Do y'all remember the episode where Charlie Brown goes to summer camp and he misses the bus, both going and coming back from camp, and he catches a ride on Snoopy's motorcycle? That isn't in Snoopy's imagination. Snoopy actually owns a motorcycle. Snoopy's doghouse is magical. It's like the Tartarus from Doctor Who. It's a lot bigger on the inside than it is the outside. It has multiple floors and a basement. It has a drawing room, a billiard room, a library, a reading room, and multiple bedrooms. Peppermint Patty? There is only one player on Charlie Brown's baseball team that she has any respect for. The funny little kid with the big nose. Peppermint Patty has no clue that Snoopy's a dog. As far as she's concerned, he's just another kid who just so happens to be pretty dang good at baseball. The writers of the Broadway play The Peanuts, at first, they also struggled with how to portray Snoopy. But they ended up coming to the same conclusion Peppermint Patty had years before. Snoopy's just another kid. The actor who portrayed Snoopy just wore a white turtleneck sweater and interacted with the other characters just as everybody else did. The only difference, whenever he spoke, all the other characters were oblivious to his words. We come back to It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, and one of my favorite messages of the film, faith in self. Lucy is constantly telling Snoopy, stop what you're doing. You're just a stupid dog. You're a dumb dog. You're just a dog. Dogs don't do this stuff. Stop doing what you're doing because you're not supposed to be doing what you're doing. Snoopy doesn't care what anybody thinks. He doesn't think that there are limits on what he can do. If he can imagine it, he can do it. As you all can imagine, that message might have a little something to do with a farm boy out of southern Missouri deciding to leave the hills to pursue architecture. And y'all don't know the half of it. Yes, Snoopy is one of my heroes. I'm going to conclude by telling you all a quick story. 
One day, I packed my bags, left my small town, and moved to, at the time, what I thought was a massive city, to a place where I knew no one. About this time of year, just a week or two before Halloween, the RAs in my apartment building, really nice couple, decided to do a social event, take everybody to a local farm for a hayride and pumpkin picking. We were all standing around waiting for the hay wagon when the RAs asked, why does everyone want to go on a hayride through the pumpkin patch? Most of my neighbors were international students, so they were saying things like, we want to experience American culture. When it came my turn, I couldn't resist. I said, I'm here to see the great pumpkin. That earned me a lot of eye rolls and groans. But two ladies laughed. Once everybody was through introducing themselves, one of the ladies came over and said in a very thick Russian accent, you like Charlie Brown? I said, oh my gosh, you sound exactly like Natasha. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Do you know who Natasha is? And she said, I know American culture good. Natasha's sexy Russian spy who chases moose and squirrel. When she said chase moose and squirrel, my inner five-year-old went, eee, I'm talking to Natasha because her accent sounded exactly like Natasha. I have no clue what Natasha's real name was because at that moment, she became Natasha. That's how she started introducing herself to everyone. Now, Natasha was a firecracker. I got stories about Natasha. She was an exchange student. She was only here in the States for a couple years, but while she was here, we became pretty good friends. Natasha and I finished chatting and she wandered off to talk to other people. The second lady who laughed walked up to me and she asked the very same question. You like Charlie Brown? And that's how I met who to this day is one of my very best friends. Not long after this lady and I started hanging out, she introduced me to her best friend. And that lady, the very first thing she said to me, oh, you're the one who likes Charlie Brown and Snoopy. Both these ladies were in the bridal party when my wife and I got married. Experience has taught me that the peanuts in general, and it's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown in particular, are a great litmus test. The people that get excited whenever I mention that show and come running to talk to me, nine times out of ten, those are people I'm going to like. It's the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown, by far, and it's not even close, is the one Halloween movie that has had the largest positive impact on my life. So yeah, I think it's the greatest Halloween movie ever made. At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about, and until next time, y'all be safe. If you all are still here, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. While you're at it, why don't you like this video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.